How often do you have one of these classes? Like, does this stack up as like one of the worst drafts you can recall? I know we're still two and a half months away from the proceedings beginning, yeah. but how long ago do you recall a draft having this little sort of general talent in your estimation? I'll let you know that after the combine field, because once those numbers are in and you see where these guys stack up physically and athletically, we're kind of estimating right now in a lot of guys and guesstimating what they may be. Uh, once the combine numbers are in, the pro days are over, and we get those grades, and I struggle to get 80. I struggle to get to 80. You normally get a 125, 130 easily, and Todd can chime in whether he had trouble there as well. I got to 80 barely, and what I do is compare the players I'm giving a grade to to last year and the year prior, and I'm looking at those numbers. I can't give him that grade because I gave him that, this grade. He's not even close. So then yep. you start doing the numbers, and they, like I say, you get to 70, 75 players. And the, also the other thing, Todd, is what surprises me is the players now that are opting to leave Mobile and go home. Okay, they have a day of practice, a couple days of practice, and they're out of there. They're not staying for the game. And the game always showed. Now, a lot of scouts back in the day would stay for the game because they felt, let's watch these guys in pregame. Let's see who actually doesn't just practice well, who plays well. Now, a lot of these guys, I mean, you're talking about a load of players. I mean, I had a whole sheet of players that were gone. Some guys opted not to come, but then how about the guys that were there and then left? And without any repercussions, you can't downgrade them. You can't lower their grade because of that. You know, you say, well, if you don't work out the combine, it's a knock one, and it became no knock on a player, okay, because then you got the pro day. Now they're leaving. I, I don't remember, Todd, the numbers of players leaving Mobile this year as opposed to last year. I think the numbers this year may have been record high in terms of guys that opted not to play in the game. Yeah, I mean, it's we're in a different world right now, right? NIL yeah. deals, transfer portal, you know, there's a lot to get into, and it's not even worth it right now. But, but to, to go back to your point, I had a very prominent head coach call me and, and, and give me the business on, on a player who I had going in my mock draft <laughs> just a, a few weeks ago, right? And I, I, I said, I've got a second round grade on him, coach, because he, he said, I've talked to, what did he say, uh, 28 different teams, and they have, first, they have second, round, second or third round grades on him. I said, I have a second round grade on that player too, but there's only first, uh, 14 first rounders that I have right now. So, like, someone's got to go in the mock draft beyond the 14th pick. And, and that, that kind of feeds into your point that, yeah, this year's class isn't great. But on the, on the positive side, the top of the draft is going to be fascinating. Mm. And we talked about it all week. Chicago sitting at one. They're trading out. They're going to take a quarterback, stick it home, and take a defensive player, Will Anderson from Alabama or Jalen Carter from, from Georgia. And if they trade out, you've got Indy sitting at four. You've got Las Vegas. You've got a bunch of teams. We, we went through, I think Tannenbaum and I went through like nine or ten different teams that potentially could trade up to that number one spot for the quarterbacks. Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson. So, yet last year we were struggling to get a guy at the quarterback spot in the first round. Kenny Pickett was the only one. This year, likely going to be four quarterbacks going round one. So, Mel, just to, to close the, the loop again on this, on this take, you guys have kind of each taken a different direction here. But if this is not considered a great draft uh, and you recall other drafts that did not going into the proceedings look like great drafts, did any of them end up, like, surprising you? Right? Were there drafts that you thought going into it, hey, this, this doesn't feel like a great draft, and then five years later it's like, okay, well, nine guys slipped through the cracks and went on to become consistent Pro Bowl players. Are there examples of that, or do you feel like in previous instances where the excitement has been lower, it has resulted in maybe not as successful drafts? Yeah. Sometimes you feel like a walking contradiction in the field because you can bash a draft and then say you could still come out of this draft with a heck of a lot of talent. And I say it because there's going to be, and Todd, chime in as well, there's going to be a lot of mixed opinion. Teams will have a second-round grade on somebody that teams might have a free agent grade on. And there's going to be a wide range of opinion on a lot of these players, which means that if you scout well or you get into, say, the fifth round and somebody says, well, I'll give you a four next year, you've given the four. Okay, there'll be some teams looking to do that, even though it's a, we can say it's not a good draft, but some teams may be looking to do that. Some teams may want to bail. They get to the end of their list and their guys are gone. They're in the fifth round. My guys are gone. I'm getting the heck out of there. I don't, I'd rather have a fifth rounder next year for a six or a six for a seven. Okay, by the same token, if guys that you like that are still in that 80, Normally, you get through seven rounds with 120, 125. There's still guys left to sign as free agents. If you see in that 80, you still got a couple guys left 
in the sixth, seventh round. Maybe it just works out that way. So for me, you could still have an A draft or a draft that's as good as last year's or the year prior or whatever, even though on paper it looks like a weak draft if guys slide through the cracks that you like, Todd. So it depends how this thing plays out. We'll wait till the combine pro days are over. But teams that, like I say, if you have quality scout, this is where you earn your money as a scout. And I think you deserve a raise if you do well this year. It's that challenging. Mm -hmm. But to say that everybody's going to be disappointed with the guys they get in this draft, and this draft isn't going to benefit you next year, is completely wrong. Mm. But Because you can still have a good draft in what appears to be a bad draft on paper. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.